Hey everyone, Coach Jeff and welcome to lesson three of effort-based training. Today I'm going to talk to you about developing the aerobic base and why that is important before we actually get into the lessons of developing um, a training plan. You know, uh, in lesson two we talked about the preparation phase. Why the preparation phase is important and the assessment and setting goals, dialing in the nutrition early. We covered all of that early in the preparation phase. Now we're in that aerobic um, base development phase and why is that important and what do you need to do? Um, the first thing you need to do is, is assess your training parameters or, or other, in other words, find your heart rate zones. Um, you know, there's a few ways to do that. There are generic formulas out there which are generally inaccurate, so I say stay away from those. Um, the other way is to learn how to listen to your body to the biofeedback systems and obviously the last way is to do a stress test and actually dial in your exact numbers, which I will suggest if you are um, a well-conditioned person, have been through training cycles before, you're probably okay to go out there and do a stress test. So how do we do stress tests? Well, there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, how do we find the lactate threshold? Obviously the most accurate way is to go to a lab, they'll put you on a treadmill, they'll put a mask on your face, um, they'll put you through a very stressful couple of running cycles, they'll check your blood gases, and they'll give you very, very accurate numbers at the end of that. However, those labs are few and far between, and they're also very costly. So if you're not in a position to get to one or to afford one, there are um, lactate threshold tests that you can do out there that we use for our teammates um, that are generally very, very, very accurate and um, provide you with great numbers to use during your training cycle. Um, but that's the first thing you want to do. If you're a new runner and you have a base fitness zone going through your prep phase, getting ready for your training phase, I'm going to say stay away from this in the beginning because we want to get you aerobically fit. Uh, we want to strengthen the muscular skeletal system early on in the training We'll, we'll run by effort and feel only, keeping things very, very easy. And then as you, as you have progressed and have gotten stronger down the road, six, eight weeks, you can probably perform a lactate threshold test so you can dial in your personal parameters. But these numbers are important. And they're, not, and they're important for, for reasons that a lot of people don't understand. Um, I don't think anyone needs to be out there looking at their watch every five minutes to see what heart rate zone they're in. I think that takes the fun out of training. Um, I think it actually elevates people's heart rate zones because they're so stressed out about it. And I, we want to change that thought process and we want to change that activity. Look, you're, you're, you're doing something that is still recreational. You're not a professional. You want to have great results, but you want to have fun along the way. And I think being that attached to your wrist is not a good way to have fun. So how do we do? We know the numbers and no numbers are programmed into the watch. So we go out and you're developing that aerobic base with very easy aerobic runs. Today you go out and you run an hour and a half at a very easy pace, which should be the low end of your zone too. You come back, you plug the watch into the computer, you look at the graph and you say, oh, I executed that perfectly. Or, oh, I was running a little too hard, or maybe I was running a little too easy. And on the next run, you make adjustments. That's the way to use your heart rate zones. This way you are developing and understanding a feeling-based training cycle and you're understanding the biofeedback you're getting as you run. And this will make you a far better runner than doing this all the time. Easy effort, go out, I run easy, I come in, I plug in a watch, oh, I wasn't running easy enough, I should have run a little bit easy. Keep in mind, in the beginning, it's all about being aerobic. And why do we want to stay aerobic? We want to stay aerobic because of the things that happen to us internally that will make us a better runner down the road and will strengthen us and help us avoid injury down the road as well when we start applying harder stresses to our body. So you want to dial in those numbers. We're going to build an aerobic base. Why are we going to build an aerobic base? We're going to build an aerobic base for lots of reasons. You know, a couple of those reasons are, as you're running aerobically, you are developing mitochondria and capillaries. What are mitochondria and capillaries? Coach, you always use these two big words. Mitochondria are simply or often referred to as the powerhouse of the cells. They generate the energy 
that our cells need to do their jobs. So the more mitochondria you have, the stronger and better your muscle cells are at doing their jobs. And your body produces more mitochondria at aerobic based efforts than it does at anaerobic based efforts. So if you're out there training very, very hard and you're anaerobic the whole time, or you're, you're so that means you're probably at or just below your lactate threshold, you're still developing mitochondria, but as much as 50% less than you are at an aerobic level. So the aerobic base part of your training, those early basic parts of your training are so important to you physiologically and internally, and you're going to get the biggest benefit from them down the road. What are capillaries? Capillaries are these tiny veins in your body that transport oxygen to the working muscles. So if you're developing more capillaries in your body, obviously what is the result? you can transport more oxygen to the working muscles. So those are the first two things that happen during, during your training cycle. And they are very, 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 very important because more mitochondria, more capillaries, better energy level at the cellular level, more veins to carry oxygen through the body, obviously is gonna help you perform longer and stronger. At the, during the aerobic phases of your training, you're developing slow twitch fibers. Slow twitch fibers are the fibers that carry you to fatigue longer. So the stronger your slow twitch fibers, the longer you can run to fatigue. Interestingly enough, we have learned through new medical studies and research that even at the end of a very long, easy effort run, your body, as you start to get tired, starts to incorporate some fast twitch fibers. And so you're even now in the aerobic phase of your training on the longer run, starting to develop some fast twitch fibers along with slow twitch fibers. The early development of these fast twitch fibers help you again with the adaptation process as the stress loads get harder down the road. So, and these slow twitch fibers you, along with those, you're strengthening the musculoskeletal system during the aerobic base phase of training. And what does that mean? Muscles are getting stronger, tendons and ligaments are getting stronger, and the stronger the muscles, the tendons and the ligaments, obviously you're going to reduce your chance of injury later on again down the road. The aerobic base phase, phase of your training teaches your body how to burn fat. You know, we're learning more and more and more and more and more people are moving to fat energy as opposed to carbohydrate energy. Why? Because we now know that your body, the average 150 pound person's body, stores upwards of 80,000 calories of fat, yet only 1,500 calories of carbohydrate. So if you're flushing carbohydrate into your system, which are fast acting sugars, basically, your body spikes its insulin levels or your blood sugar levels go bang and then they drop down. So you have to go through a continuing process. We're learning that with a body that becomes more fat adaptive, a body that is learning how to use fat for energy more than carbohydrate for energy, you get a much more even and sustained and longer lasting energy. So this all happens at the aerobic base part of your training. And of course, you're preparing your body for the harder race specific efforts down the road. So there are, a couple of, there are a couple of misconceptions out there about the initial aerobic base training that I hear all the time. And my coach told me to run this slower. I'm running so slow I don't feel like I'm getting a workout. That isn't what should be happening in these early phases of training. Yes, you want to run aerobic. I don't have anyone or I don't teach anyone to run anaerobic at any point during these early phases of base building aerobic workouts because the stresses are a little too hard for the bodies and your body hasn't adapted to those stress levels and you haven't received the full benefit of the aerobic base workouts at this point. Now, does that mean that every workout is out there so slow you don't feel like you've had a workout? Absolutely not. You need to be running at an aerobic level where at the end of the workout you feel like you've had a workout but a workout that you can recover from very quickly with a little bit of nutrition and a little bit of rest. It should not be a workout 
that exhausts you to the point where you don't feel like you want to do anything the rest of the day. They're going to come a little bit longer. But in the beginning, we don't want those. We want you to have good, solid, base-building, aerobic conditioning workouts that let you feel like you've had a workout. You can throw variations of runs in your aerobic-based training cycle. And when I say variations of runs, I mean you're going to have an hour and a half easy run, an hour easy run, 60 minute easy run, depending on where you are fitness level wise. But you can throw aerobic based fartlek efforts in there. And what is an aerobic based fartlek effort? Well, where you're running at a very easy effort and you throw in one or two minute fartleks, where you're running at a little bit more intense effort, but still staying aerobic. So you might be going from zone two to low zone three and then back again. You know, this also helps coordinate the body movements very early in your training process and also incorporates a little fast twitch fiber work. So it's not all about just going out there and going so easy that nothing's happening. We want to apply stresses to your body that causes your body to go into a catabolic state. And then as you recover, it gets anabolic and starts to rebuild so that at the end of each phase of training, you get a little bit stronger right up until the end and you reach your peak. So again, keep in mind, first thing we're going to do is we're going to develop the aerobic base. How we're going to do that, we're going to assess our training parameters. We're going to dial in those heart rate zones. We have tests that we're more than happy to share with you. If you want to do that to dial in your numbers, all you have to do is ask somewhere in the education center or send us an email, prsfit at gmail.com. You're going to develop mitochondria and capillaries at the aerobic level. Slow twitch fibers develop at the aerobic level. It's your slow twitch fibers that carry you longer to fatigue. Um, you're going to strengthen the muscular skeletal system. I can't say enough about how important it is to have strong muscles, ligaments, and tendons to help avoid injury down the road. Um, and you're going to teach your body how to increase its fat burning abilities for energy rather than fast acting carbohydrate energy that isn't very sustainable energy. Um, all of this, what happens, it prepares your body for the harder efforts that we'll see down the road. So that's why we develop an aerobic, that's why we develop the aerobic base. Those are the things we're looking for in the very, very beginning. Um, as we get into the next phase, we're going to start talking about how to lay out your program um, as you're building that aerobic base. Again, if you have any questions, prsfit at gmail.com. Ask them right here at the bottom of the Education Center. This is your Education Center. We're open to suggestion. We're open to questions. We want to help you become a better runner. Um, as always, be healthy, train smart, have fun. I'm Coach Jeff, and I'll see you in the next lesson.